Hi, welcome to Simply Country Cuisine. I'm Susie. Well, for the video today, we're going to make, this is Mark's absolutely favorite fried chicken that I make. I've made it a couple times, and he keeps saying, man, you need to do this on the video, and I'm sure somebody in somewhere has done, has done it before. Now, I normally take a boneless, skinless chicken breast, a nice plump one, and you've seen myself and Jaden do this on the video. We, we fillet it this way. But I found the last time I made these, I made these from Mark, I used the um, chicken breast tenders. What I've put in here is just regular all-purpose flour. And normally, I would be using my Paula Dean seasoning, which we have done a video on. I've got about maybe a teaspoon in here. And I noticed, well, that's not gonna be enough. Well, I know what's in the Paula Dean seasoning. It is uh, salt and pepper and uh, garlic powder. So I'm just gonna add about a fourth of a teaspoon more of black pepper, about a quarter of a teaspoon of kosher salt, a half a teaspoon more of the garlic powder. And then after I'm done with this, I think I'll be making some more Paula Dean seasoning because I went through it. Then I blend, I'm gonna blend it up in the, in the flour. The only other ingredient that I use is buttermilk and I'm gonna pour it in my bowl. Oh, maybe a cup, a half a cup. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my uh, chicken tenders. I'm going to wet it in the buttermilk, dredge it in the flour, All right, we have our chicken dredged in the uh, seasoned flour and the buttermilk, and this is pretty hot, so I'm going to carefully lay a few of them in there. Now, don't overcrowd your uh, skillet. Now, I have let my chicken tenders become a little room temperature. They've been setting out for a little bit, and that's probably a good idea because if the meat's too cold inside, it won't get done. So I'm just gonna do like maybe three at a time. And again, I am a big chicken when it comes to cooking chicken. So I have a meat thermometer and I want it to be 165 or above when I uh, check my doneness. Now, when you are doing this, try not to, like I just did, try not to disturb it too early. You want it that nice, even crispy brown coat on one side. And I can tell that this is because it's starting to brown around the edges. And I'm gonna carefully turn it. And I'm cooking it in a light oil. I'm cooking it in a canola oil, not olive oil. I want it to be crispy and tender on the inside. So I am gonna wash it. I'm guessing cooking time, maybe uh, for the small tenders, um, maybe four or five minutes on each side. And you, you can test it. Go out and get you one of these little chef's I'm bombers. checking it again, I just, the ones I've turned. And now this one I haven't turned, I am now turning it. Um, I do find cooking it in the iron skillet is really good um, because it cooks evenly. Um, it doesn't make hot spots on your chicken. That means part of it's not darker or more done than the others. So, Invest in your, invest in a nice iron heavy skillet. It's worth your weight in gold. Um, it was toward the end of the school year, or maybe it was toward the beginning of the school year this year. I had uh, one of Pastor Amber and Adam's uh, sons come by, little Cy, which is not so little anymore. Um, and he and I did crispy corn dogs. This would be a good way to do that with that same kind of batter. Uh, it would give your corn dog a little bit different of a taste. I think when we did it, we did it with a, a corn meal. 
so uh, cornmeal batter, but you could do it with a flour batter, maybe half and half, and that would make them really, really crunchy. And I have a, a glass ceramic uh, soup bowl over here with paper towel in it because I have several more I'm going to be cooking and I want them to just drain the fat down into the paper towel because then it doesn't make my chicken when I serve it too oily, too greasy. Oops, that one is done. See, that registered 100, well, he missed it, but it registered 172. So I'm gonna take that one out Do it. One more quick flip. I just want my my chicken to be totally thinny. I mean, yeah, they're done. Okay, so now I will take them out. And lay them on my paper towel. Hi, welcome back. Now these three chicken tenders are completely done and we're going and cooled enough that I can take a sample of one. I want Dina to come as close as she can. I want you to see how tender and juicy they come out. And see how tender that is and how moist? And you know me, I love salt. I'm gonna try it without salting at first. Oh my, that's really good. So versatile, there's so much you can do with it. You can have the tenders and save your uh, oil in your pan, well dump most of the oil out, but save some of your drippings and your little crispies in there and you can make a nice gravy and have tenders with gravy and mashed potatoes or put them over noodles or rice. Um, make these up for your kidders at lunch. Um, cut it, You can cut them into nuggets. Just cut little nuggets out of it and make your own chicken nuggets. And that would be very, very good and how much more healthy for your little ones. Um, so many different things. Put them in salads, put them, cook them up. And Mark's gonna get some of these for his lunch this week. He likes to put them in a thermos cup and then uh, just warm them up a little bit. Uh, take a little thing of barbecue sauce and when he gets at a stopping point he can eat, he just dips his chicken strips in his barbecue sauce. So there you go, fried up chicken strips. Thank you so much for joining us on Simply Country Cuisine. We are so grateful to have 260 viewers on our uh, YouTube channel, and we're looking for lots, lots more. Just keep sharing, 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 sharing. And Jonathan Kahn, thank you for giving me a couple ideas to help me enlarge our audience. And always remember to subscribe, like, and share on the YouTube channel. And if you don't have a place to worship, please always join us at any one of our Glad Tidings churches. Uh, one church, five locations. We would love to have you. God bless and have a beautiful day.